starting. Fox swimmer, I am Mandy O. This is Grow Make Cook, and welcome to my garden. We have been doing some thinking here at Grow Make Cook, and we've been doing this for a little while now, and we've covered all of the seasons. And I've just started harvesting my chamomile to dry and turn into tea and I'll be harvesting some of my mint, which means that we've come pretty much full circle. We've covered the dramas of the garden, the voles, the beetles. Right now I've got bolting beetroots, but I don't want to get bogged down in garden drama. I'm not a person who likes to enjoy the consistent turmoil that comes with drama. In fact, one of the most lovely and relaxing things about having a garden as your primary hobby is that it's peaceful, it's calm and it's quiet. And so with the view of keeping everything slower, quieter and calmer, this looks like it's going to be the end of our journey together. So I'm going to do a little show you around today and I'd like to show you a little bit more of the overview of, of what we've been doing but this is us here saying a very very fond farewell because I feel like we've added what we had to add and said what we had to say. So let's get to it. This back here in my cottage garden is my rocket that I've been leaving over for seed and I keep it and when it starts to dry out to this sort of level and some of the seeds have actually already started to drop and you can see the empty pods there. That's when I break these off and store them ready to sow next year. But that's exactly the same technique I showed you last time with peas and we've done the same thing with the uh, Tuscan kale, which is just starting to really set seed nicely now. So this skill of seeing when it's naturally ready to be stored and then storing it is something we've covered lots now. And while it's glorious, I think I can trust you to just do it. And down here in the budget garden where we put in the endive, which has also gone over to seed, it's gotten a bit warm, and the sorrel, which is making flowers, but still lovely, mm, tender, lemony and edible. All of the decisions that I've been making about what I want to plant mean that I'm now getting people asking what they should plant. And I don't want to be this sort of gardener who tells people what they should be doing. So time for big decisions for yourself. My last sort of tips and tricks for deciding what it is you want to plant are the things we've been talking about on and off. And that is what your goals are. Do you want food to store? Do you want food to eat right now? Do you want to eat the, do you want to grow things that will lower your shopping budget? Do you want to just grow things for the beauty of that really extraordinarily rich taste? So I'm growing tomatoes. They're great, big and bushy. And for me, that's a must. But for some people who don't eat tomatoes, lettuces might be the right answer. So I think the best thing to be doing would be to be finding resources local to your area 
books written by local people, local gardening clubs, and other YouTube channels. And I want to say thank you to everybody in our community for all the support and love and advice you have given me over the last couple of years. You are all truly as much a part of this garden as either Mr. O or myself. Just because this is the end of my weekly video log doesn't mean it's the end of everything, however. Um, I'm still going to be around and we've got some ideas for other types of content that we might want to make in the future. So I'm not trying to cut anybody out and if you still want to use the email address that's listed in our about section, I'm still happy to answer your questions. Um, but we call this the end of an era, I suppose. I wish you all happy gardening. I hope that I have inspired you all to grow, make or cook. And with a lot of love and a little bit of sadness, Dovigenia.